Hello guys, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how you can create these YouTube end screen cuts in Adobe Premiere Pro. So without wasting more time, let's go and show you how you can do this. Inside Premiere Pro, the first thing I would do is to create a new sequence. And to do this, I'm gonna click the right button of the mouse, go to new item and select sequence. From here, I'm gonna use 1080 by 25 frames per second. And I'm gonna press OK. Then I'm gonna go up to Essential Graphics Panel and if you can't see this on your workspace, you can go up to Windows and from there you can click on Essential Graphics. Then I'm gonna click on Libraries because I saved this pre-made template that you can use for free inside Premiere Pro. I'm gonna grab it and apply it to the timeline. It will ask me whether I want to change the sequence settings or keep the existing one. And I'm gonna click on keep existing one. Then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna move the cursor to the point where I can see the details on this template. And I'm gonna use this template as a reference to create my own rectangles and circle onto this program monitor. And to do this, I'm gonna go down to the rectangle tool, select it, go back to the program monitor and create a similar rectangle to the one onto the pre-made template. It could be a little bit bigger than this one, like that, and then I'm gonna press escape and then V. Then I'm gonna go back down to the rectangle too and this time I'm gonna select the ellipse too. And I will create a circle by holding shift and create a perfect circle like that. Again, I'm gonna press escape and then V and place it at the middle. Now, when we have created those two elements, I'm gonna go down to the timeline and extend this layer so it can match the pre-made template like that and after that i'm gonna delete the pre-made template because we don't need it anymore then i'll select the graphic layer and go back to the essential graphic panel and from there i'm gonna change the names of those shapes because otherwise we're gonna get confused which one is which so for example this one i'm gonna name it rectangle one like that and the second one I'm gonna name circle. And now I'm gonna select the rectangle and go down to stroke and tick the box for stroke. I'm gonna put around 10 and we're gonna have this white stroke around the rectangle. Personally, I like that, but it's up to you whether you would like to apply the stroke or not. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the circle. Again, I'm gonna put the value up to 10. Also, I'm gonna decrease the opacity to both elements. Again, I'm gonna select the rectangle, go down to opacity and put it down to 65. And I'm gonna do the same with the circle. There we go, 65%. And then after I've done that, I'm gonna move the circle to that side of the screen. And I'm gonna move the rectangle somewhere over here. That's perfect. And once I've done this, I'm gonna go back to the rectangle click with the right button of the mouse and duplicate it. After that, I'm gonna grab the duplicated element and place it somewhere over here. Now, when we've done with creating the elements, the next thing I'll do is create a text. To create a text, I'm gonna press T and I'm gonna create text somewhere around the program monitor. I'm gonna type it out, thanks for watching. Then I'm gonna press escape and V and move the text somewhere over here. But I want to change this font and to do this, I'll go to the effect control panel. You can do it from the essential graphics panel as well, but I prefer going to the effect control panel and uh, change the font from there. I'll be using the Nimbus one and also I'm gonna make all the letters capital and I'm gonna decrease the size of it a little bit. Something like that. Okay, that's perfect. And one more thing I'll do to that text, I'll create a background. I'm gonna go down to background and click on background. I'll leave the opacity to 75%, but I'm gonna increase the size of it just to 10.6. And also I'm gonna make the edges around 10% round like that. Then the next thing I'll do is go to the essential graphics panel 
select the thanks for watching text, the right button of the mouse and duplicate it three times. Then one by one, I'm gonna drag the text over here, then somewhere over here, it's fine. Yeah, somewhere over here. And then the last one over here. Of course, we're gonna change the text. That's gonna be next video. Okay, escape and V. Then this one is gonna be previous video. I don't know whether I spelled right previous, but please don't judge me about it. And I'm gonna press escape and then V again and readjust the text a little bit. Move also the next video over here, right? And then I'm gonna change the last one to subscribe, like that. Escape and V as well. Brilliant, that looks perfect. And now the last thing it's left to be actually, there's two more things to be done. The first one is to add a background, and the second one is to add animated arrows. So, to add the background, I'm gonna go and grab one of those backgrounds that I already uploaded into Premiere Pro, and I'll drag it onto the timeline. And from there, I'm gonna match the length of the graphic layer, and now we've got a background as well. And by the way, if you'd like to get a similar background that the one I'm using for this video, you can go to Adobe Stock, click on free, and this is gonna take you to this page where you can click on free videos, and then you can go to backgrounds. And from here, you've got thousands of images and background videos that you can use for your projects. It's completely free and you don't have to pay anything. You have just to create a free account with Adobe Stock and you'll be able to use all of these assets. And the second thing we have to do is to apply those animated arrows. To do this, again, I'm gonna go back to the Essential Graphics panel. I'm gonna click on Browse and from there, I'm gonna tick off the libraries and I'm gonna type down arrow. Okay, and I'm gonna grab this animated arrow and I'm gonna place it on top of both layers. And also I'm gonna extend the length as well. But as you can see, we've got look at this text, which we don't need. I'm gonna simply delete it. And then I'm gonna duplicate this arrow three more times by holding Alt and the left button of the mouse, like that. Next, I'm gonna move the arrows this one, it's out of one. I'm gonna move it up to next video. Change the angle of it. Okay. Something like that. I can't see it now, but I'll be able to see it in a second. Okay. Right. Perfect, like that. And I'm gonna select arrow two and move it up. And then to the right, a bit further up. Okay, I'm gonna make it smaller as well. Like that, brilliant. And now arrow three. Gonna change the angle. All right, that's perfect. I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's, that's brilliant. And when I play it from the beginning, We've got this animation of the arrows. But I would like to add a breeding animation to the circle. And to do this, I'm gonna select the circle, go to the effect control panel, get to the circle. Yeah, and that's the circle. I'm gonna open it, go down to scale, remove the cursor somewhere at the beginning, a few frames before the beginning of the video, and create a keyframe. I'm just gonna Decrease the size of it to 93. Then I'm gonna move a few frames forward like that. Go back to 100. Then I'm gonna select again the first keyframe. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see better. And I'm gonna press Ctrl and C. Move a few frames forward like that and then Ctrl and V. Like that, we copy it and paste it. And now when we've got those three keyframes, I'm gonna select them, the right button of the mouse, and Vizier. So to save a lot of time and hustle, to make this animation to last until the end of this end card, I'm gonna select those three keyframes, Control and C to copy them, move 
two frames forward and then control and V. Let me just zoom out a little bit. like that so it can save a lot a lot of time and when i play it now we've got this breathing animation to the circle and honestly it looks brilliant i really like this end card that i just created right now and with that i'm gonna finish this tutorial guys that's how you can create a youtube end card in adobe premiere pro as you can see it's not so difficult to do it and i hope you enjoyed it. and if you did so please hit that like button and subscribe my channel for more videos like this one thank you for watching and i'll see you next time